Welcome to Crush It With Prospecting. I can't wait to dig into this material with you. What we're going to be coaching to are some thoughts, strategies, techniques, and mindsets that are designed to help you reach out and connect with more good fit prospects. When we think about prospecting, Whenever I have a chance to speak with salespeople, either one-on-one, in a group, in webinars, I always get the same exact thing. Oh, if there's one thing I hate about my job is prospecting, which is re- really interesting, frankly, because out of everything that you have to do, think about this, out of everything that you have to do, prospecting is probably the, the easiest one to do, isn't it? I mean, they're in or they're out. <laughs> and for most of us, that's the problem is it's built in with more rejection than, than anything else. It's just part of the system. But usually what I find is if we're not connecting with enough good fit prospects, it can break down in one of two areas. The first one is technical. And the second is conceptual. So let, before we go a whole lot further, let's talk about those two. Technical and conceptual. Now technical, it's when you don't know what to do. Think about when you first got into sales. Think about when you first joined the company that you work for now. Think about when you first started selling what it is that you now sell. You didn't know what to do. You didn't even know what to say. You had a basic understanding, maybe a framework of how the conversation ideally was supposed to go. And maybe you started with a script. So when they say this, you say this. And when they do this, you do that. Now, scripts are fine. (laughs) <laughs> as long as the person on the other end of the phone or across the desk knows their lines, right? So we go in, we smile big, we talk loud, and we introduce our, our conversations, our products, our services, and we want to find out, hey, are you open to having a conversation? And what happens very quickly is we get rid of the technical problem, but then the conceptual one shows up. It's when, supposedly, when you know what to do, but you just can't get yourself to do it. Have you ever been caught in that almost catch-22 trap of, I know I have to have more conversations with more people in order to make sales, but the people that that I do have conversations with don't want to talk to me. They're not interested. They, They won't open up. They won't tell me what's going on. A lot of times, they won't even see me. So why bother to make the calls? Why bother to to go on the appointments when I know it's going to happen? If you can relate to either the technical piece or the conceptual piece, we're going to be digging into some thoughts, strategies, and ideas, some mindsets to help you get past the, the fear of rejection, to help make prospecting what it's supposed to be, finding out who's open to having a conversation. As we go through this session today, we're going to be coaching to a couple rules and they're going to show up again and again and again. So let me give them all to you at one time and then we'll start by digging into each one. So the first rule that we're going to coach to, and I'll tell you what, when I figured this one out, it changed the game, changed my personal selling numbers. It Everyone that I have a chance to work with, when they internalize this first rule, prospecting is not selling. It takes all the pressure away. The second rule that we're going to coach to is a concept that goes, you can't lose what you never had. That's a saying, and I'm sure songs have been written about it. But what does that mean for us in the world of sales? The third rule is control the process and let go of the outcome. We're going to talk about some very interesting statistics here. And if you can relate to any of them, great, because we're going to break this down, control the process and let go of the outcome that might just change your outlook on sales in general. And the last rule is what I call 80-20. That's, it's not my rule, but it's built around this idea of the Pareto principle, the, the 80-20 rule. If you're unfamiliar with it, it says that usually 80% of your results come from 20% of your efforts. In, in the world of sales, how it typically works in most sales organizations, if you take a look at the top performers, in any sales organization, usually what you find is the top 20% of the individuals are usually making 80% of the sales. Interestingly enough, flip that over and here's what you find. The bottom 20% in any sales organization are usually the ones that are causing 80% of the problems. (laughs) Now, how does that relate to prospecting? All right, so here's what we're going to be talking about. 
initially, our job is to ask questions, right? We, we, we want to get information. So what that means is, is that the prospect is going to be talking 80% of the time. And you and I, the, the salesperson, we're only talking 20% of the time. See, initially, our job is to get information, not give it. We want to be able to ask questions that help them engage in the conversation. Amateur salespeople, here's what they believe, that they have to prove how good they are, that they have to prove how smart they are in order for someone to want to listen to them. And the way they think they do that is by immediately telling them everything that they know about their product. But what usually happens? Think about the last time somebody approached you, a salesperson approached you, and they started launching into this, this huge explanation about what it is that they do and how they do it before even finding out, are you open to talking about it? Would you be interested in, in hearing about it? But instead, what if they were to ask questions? What if they were to find out, why are they interested? See, that the quality of our conversations, it really is in direct proportion to the types of questions that we ask. So let's stop right there. Let, let me ask you a question. When was the last time you were in a conversation with somebody, could be a prospect or really anybody, and you said something and they stopped and said, wow, that, that's a really good question. <laughs> now, if you're like most people out there, your immediate response is, um, I, I don't think anyone's ever said that. Now I'm going to poke a little fun here. Do you think maybe it's because we're not asking very good questions? We're going to talk about how to do that in this session. The 80-20 rule says that initially it's our job to get information, not give it. And we do that by asking the types of questions that make them stop and think and get involved in our process.